Hello, I'm Nathan Judah. I'm here with Wolves reporter Mr. Liam Keane. Liam, we just heard from Gary O'Neill, head of the big game against Nottingham Forest. Uh, we are inside because it's raining and it's cold. Uh, but we've got an update first on Johnny. Do you want to... The club have obviously given a statement. Uh, please, will you let the peeps know what's going on? Yes. Um, so, a good statement, really, because it gives an outline as to where uh, the club are, their stance on it. It doesn't go into details of what Johnny did, um, but uh, you can... The, the punishment he's been given, I suppose, will hint to the severity of what's, of what's happened. Um, and, and the headline, really, is that Johnny is, um, will no longer be training with the first team up until the end of January. He is welcome to train and play with the 21s, and they expect him to probably go ahead and do that to keep fit. So you probably see him at 21s games um, this month. They've got two more games in December mm -hmm. before the winter break. Uh, but he will not be training with the Wolves' first team, uh, will not be available for, for any games up until the end of January. Um, what the statement doesn't say is it doesn't directly say what his future will be. Um, as far as we understand it, the likelihood is to suit all parties, he will move on in January. Mm -hmm. um, but there's a lot of ifs and buts there. He's still on, you know, he's still a year and a half left in his contract. Uh, he's to still, find a club. He's got to find a club. He's still an asset for Wolves, um, regardless of not playing a financial asset. So they've got to find a deal that's right for everyone. But um, I think they would like to to move him on if they can make it work in January. But regardless of what does happen in terms of transfers, he will not be training or playing with the first team until the end of January. Yeah, Matt Hobbs has obviously come out with a statement um, and it's pretty severe, isn't it? Because, you know, we see training ground fracas every single day up and down the country. And sometimes there's stern words, sometimes it's have a couple of days to cool off, sometimes it's two weeks wages, four weeks wages. This is pretty significant. Yeah, it wouldn't be a, a, a situation where a player is um, shunned from the first team um, if it wasn't a serious situation. As to your point just then, these things happen all the time on a lot you know, less severe scale um, and the details of what he has done haven't come to light as of yet but it's clearly strong enough and severe enough that the club feel this is the right move. Um, it's also because, as uh, Matt Hobbs alludes to in his quotes, that they, they're trying to keep the structure and the camaraderie and the character of this squad together and Johnny unfortunately at this point is becoming a distract distraction for the club and the first team and what Gary Neal is trying to do so from their point of view they remove that distraction it makes their lives a lot easier Johnny's got 18 months left on his deal so yeah. whether that is whether he does find a club first of all whether it's, I'm sure permanent would be what you'd look to first, but there could be a, a potential loan deal as well, at least till the end of the season, giving them the summer, because we know that January is a very short window, maybe the summer to, to look at something more permanent. But regardless of whether he, he goes on loan, whether he goes permanently, whether he stays, this is a pretty sad ending, isn't it, to, to the end of his, his Wolves career? It is. Um, it's important to note that he's apologised mm -hmm. for what's happened, and he understands the club's stance. But it is a sad ending because he's almost the last man standing of the Nuno era, isn't he? Um, an era that was so successful for Wolves. He was an excellent player. I think he, the thing that all, I always remember from Johnny as a, as a player in, there, in, in that prime before his, his two injuries, his two serious injuries, was that he was Mr. Consistent. He mm -hmm. was a player that was a 7 out of 10 every week, minimum, if not better. Um, he scored goals, he got forward. He, he was a, an exceptionally good mm -hmm. left wing back for Wolves. Mm -hmm. Uh, at a time and, and, and played on the right very and, yeah exactly well. yeah at a time when the club was you know in a really good uh, position and, and era so it is sad to see it come to what we expect to be an end um, I suppose you never say never but the, the you know all the, mm. the signs are certainly leading to that um, and look he'll, he'll have interest I'm sure uh, as I've reported in, in, in the summer Getafe the Spanish club were after him he chose to stay there's another unnamed Spanish club uh, that were also interested something I've not said publicly um, before but I believe that Como, the Italian side, were also interested in the, uh, in the summer. So not to say those clubs will still be interested in January, but there will be clubs, I'm sure, that will be interested in taking him. Um, it be you know, remains to be seen if it's permanent, a loan. A loan might be easier, but you know, I'm sure he's done decent wages as well. Well, that's it. Wages are going to come into it, aren't they? And, and with this situation, with the quotes that have come out today, there might have to be a bit of back and forth between the club and, and Johnny and, and, and the club that are interested in to make this happen, you'd have thought, because you'd expect him to be on a lot higher wages than what he's going to be offered elsewhere. Yeah, I think, as I say, he is a financial asset still to Wolves, regardless of him not really being involved in a playing side with uh, 18 months left. So I don't think the club are going to want to throw that away necessarily, mm. but they're also going to want to find a solution to this. And... I think for Johnny's sake also, because he is liked and well respected here, regardless of the incident that's happened, I think they would like to find a solution for him too. But you've got to try and find one that works. Mm. 
it's not going to be the perfect deal if he does go. Um, the Wolves are probably going to have to bend a little bit, but equally, I don't think they're going to throw that away. So it'll be one to watch. Strange, isn't it? Because you, you line the squad up at the start of this season, you look at potential, I guess, bad eggs or something, and a lot of those guys have left, by the way, which is what Gary O'Neill wants, that environment. He wants a very cohesive environment where everybody's working towards each other, working in the same direction. And Johnny would be one of the last people, I would think, to be in this situation. I know there was a lot of rumours around him uh, that fans sort of bring up quite a lot over the last couple years or so about him being involved in training ground incidents or uh, no, not liked by managers. And I've never had anything to you know, substantiate that's true. I've, I've got no evidence to say that's true at all. All I, To me, it's hearsay and rumours uh, until I've got something to prove it. What I can prove is that I've heard from countless people, managers, staff, players, staff in general at the club, not just football staff, um, that over the years he's been a liked guy, professional guy. Just look at the quotes from November, early November this year, I asked uh, Gary O'Neill about him before this mm. incident and he said, look, he's a super professional guy, great to have around the place, um, he'll be involved for us for sure, uh, regardless of his limited minutes so mm. far. So um, I would never have expected this of him. Um, it'd be interesting to see what comes of it going forward, but as, as, as it stands, he won't be around the first team and probably moved on in January. And he definitely won't be in the squad tomorrow. Nottingham no. Forest, of course, is, is the big game. Um, look, Gary, I had a few things to say, which will be interesting, and I'm sure you'll see them next week um, on the uh, But also, uh, in terms of injury news, uh, we're looking at the likes of Pedro Neto. Could we see him tomorrow? No. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Um, Unless Gary was deliberately oh, that would have been mis curveball. misleading us to throw him in, but I, I, he was quite strong in it, so I'd be surprised. He said no, he's probably a week, five days away from actually joining in team training. Okay. He's been back on the grass, as we said last week, but he's not been in team training. So, um, so what yeah. are we looking then? Are we looking at potentially Boxing Day? Oh, sorry, Boxing Day, Christmas Eve for the Chelsea he game? He can turn up Boxing Day if he won't, but he won't have a game to play. <laughs> he might have some fitness. Um, do, you think, do you think that's a realistic game? Yeah, or do you think maybe before that? So, the way Gary Neal phrased it is that, um, yeah, a week to five days, hopefully we'll be involved in training with a team. He's then hopefully available from then onwards, so to speak. Um, he's officially fit and declared to play, but you've got to build him up. So I don't think you'll see him thrown into a starting eleven. Maybe you'll see him on the bench. Maybe bench for the West Ham game if you're fortunate. Um, but perhaps the Chelsea game on Boxing Day. Or sorry, uh, I did your thing right. on, uh, on Christmas Eve would be um, would be more. Yeah, more likely, I would okay. say. And other injuries, Ryan Norrie, has he got a chance? Not for tomorrow. It's very, very unlikely. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think it's a 0% chance like Neto, but it's very unlikely. Um, it's not quite reacted in the way they'd hoped with the ankle, so a little bit longer for him. Um, hopefully not too much longer. Okay, I'll give you three questions to finish off with Team News. Right, here we go. Saar Bentley. Well, Saar is 100% fit, according to Gary O'Neill. I think Gary O'Neill chooses Saar. Okay. I think it'd be a bit harsh on Bentley, but I think he chooses Saar. Hugo Bueno or Matt Doherty? As far as we're aware, neither of them injured. It seems to me like, you know, Bueno had cramp. He's, he was, um, he's only just come back from injuries. Three games in a week, too much for him. I'm going to just say maybe he'll go Doc. Okay. Um, and Bellegarde or Sarabia? Again, we, as far as we're aware, both fit. It's a, it's a toss up that one it's a, it's a difficult one Gary Neal seemed happy with Sarabi after the other day I think he goes Balagard ok uh, we're going to go soon because uh, the air conditioning is just about to come on and my battery's uh, very low as well uh, so finally uh, score prediction please I don't even remember what I said now what did I say <laughs> what did I say on the podcast the other 1-0 I said 1-0 I said 1-0 scrappy 1-0 win scrappy 1-0 I'm going to go 2-1 uh, for the build up on this one make sure you log on to expressandstar.com